cut anybody out. All right, you guys. So the root cause of your suffering, and here's the insight. What is the root cause of your suffering? Your suffering didn't just happen. It first showed up one day a long time ago. That's been the root cause of your suffering ever since. All suffering has a root cause. At that time, you put up with it. You compromised something in your life to experience something else. You saw something else as more important in your life at that time. A good analogy would be, you know the wheels on your car are out of alignment and you decide not to do anything about it. So like all your previous decisions, you go right into compromise by tolerating the situation. You continue driving a car that is out of alignment and out of balance. The lesson here is ignoring a problem will create imbalances causing you to suffer. Life begins to wear on you and maybe the wheels in your life fall off. When that happens, you don't think about the root cause, that it was your fault in the first place. Instead, you start looking for someone or something to blame. It's in the blaming that you justify your original decision. You tell yourself the root cause was right. I mean, the decision was right. It was the right, it was the correct thing for me to do at that time. As you continue to avoid the root cause, blaming others is your only choice since you didn't own up to the fact that it was you who made that bad decision. These poor decisions are rooted in that time capsule from long ago when you were ill-equipped to make them. Ever since then, your only way out was to blame others. Of course, it wasn't your fault. You are a great decision maker. However, when you track your life back to the day you made that decision, the day the root cause of your pain and suffering began, when the suffering you continue to experience today started, will you look at it differently? You will see one bad decision that started that day, but to keep the compromised life going, it produced a series of bad decisions. Now, what do you do? How do you go back and fix it? You must do a couple of things. One, Identify the exact time in your life you made that first bad decision. What were the circumstances around how you made it? Why did you think it was so important at the time? In doing this, you will identify what happened right before you made that decision. You will remember receiving guidance warning you that it was a mistake. Receiving that guidance caused you to halt for a moment. You continued to get intuitive hits, those gut feelings that told you not to go that direction, down that lost and lonesome road once again. You are far along on your journey and think you are running out of time to fix it or make a course correction. This feeling of urgency is guidance telling you it's time to heal this. It's going to take some work on your part to unravel and own up to the bad decisions that got you where you are today. Summary, the pain you are experienced today, you experienced today, came from a decision you made a long time ago. You made a judgment call when you made that original decision. It was a shot in the dark. You chose what you thought was pleasure over pain, and now that has been reversed. How it works. Everyone eventually gets to the root cause of their suffering. That is, once the pain interrupts their pleasure deep enough and long enough. Pain becomes the motivator and your wake-up call. That's what unwittingly happened in my early life. Like a pawn 
in some sort of predestined divine chess game. I met up with my spirit guides and angels at the beginning of my life. Their guidance has been a game changer for me. Your guides don't want you to suffer. You came into this life to learn something. It's an urge deep inside you that could become painful if you ignore it. If it's painful or you feel an urgency, then it's time to take action. Identify the root cause of your suffering. Make the needed course correction. Then welcome the unfolding of who you are and why you are here. Take your journey back to where the root cause of your suffering began and restore your life. The suffering ends when you find your purpose. Okay, once again, Facebook viewers, if you're with us right now, uh, you can join us by clicking on the link to join us here on Zoom and interact with us. So feel free to do that. You are welcome to do that. And there's some familiar faces. Who do we have, Ray? We have Anne. Hi, Anne. Yeah. Bridget. And Bridget. And Kathy. Hi, you guys. Somebody was at, Somebody else was there, but they took a break, I guess. Okay. They, yeah. they, they may come and go sometimes. You That's know? it. So when I was listening to you read that, I'm thinking about pain I've had in my life and tried to look back at the root cause. And basically all along, you were just ignoring your guidance. That's true. I mean, all those things that told you, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't go that way. Maybe you shouldn't go out with that person. Maybe you shouldn't take that job. Maybe you shouldn't do this. But you took, but you did it anyway. Okay. So what got? Wh where did the guide start talking about this? I made it. I highlighted this. This is good that Ray brought that up. And thank you, Ray. I didn't expect you to say that, and it prompts me to bring this up. Compromise is what it's. It's the. It's what blocks the guidance. Because what happened is when you first made that first decision, it was like a knee-jerk reaction. You got shocked into making it. You, you got scared or something threatened you or you felt you were going to hurt someone's feelings or, or something as a little child you felt uh, concerning about. Okay, it concerned you. So the root cause of your suffering is in, is in making these decisions that are not uh, right for you. And the reason you did that, the reason you stepped into that and made that, that decision that could have been a better decision, let's say, is because you compromised. You were trying to get uh, uh, mom and dad to get along. You were trying to, you know, make it right for somebody else. And so, so the other people would like them. You, you, were, you were trying to be the, you're trying to fix everything, okay, because you're the little kid and you want everyone to love each other because you don't care what they did. You love them all. All right. So this is coming from a really early part in your life where you stepped into this. And ever since then, you've been you, it's been a knee jerk reaction and a knee jerk reaction. OK, so it's a compromise you stepped into. You, you learned what compromise was really young. So what Ray was talking about, it was just it was just continuing the compromise. And it happened to produce a bad decision. At that point, it was compromise that had a hold of you, and it controlled your life. Mm -hmm. That's what's interesting about this. So while it looks like a decision, and you make that, you don't make the best decisions or whatever, you know, and we all go through that. It really is where we compromised ourselves, and we bought into something that 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 we've been doing ever since. And that's what we have to catch. That's why writing this in your journal. So you can see it the minute it happens. You can catch yourself because you won't catch yourself in the beginning. In fact, next week we're going to talk about the, the, the next step into this, okay, in our next session next week. It kind of falls right into it and, and how this continues to, to – how you continue to heal it, how, what you do to, to actually fix this, okay, but in this world, okay, so you fix it. You make this connection to your guides. You get the, these gut feelings, and you know they're the truth, and you write them in your journal, and you act on that, okay? That's what you act on. What about the people in this world? How are they going to respond to that? Because compromising worked real well for them. When you compromised, you fit them into your life like putting them above you, and they mm -hmm. like that. 
that, that worked out real well for them. It does work out really well for them. You see how this works? This is what happens. So it's really in the compromise that we have to take a look at it. I think in the journal, in, in the journal, let me see where compromise is. It shows up and it really shows up big time. Look at this journal. It's been written in. It's Coffee's been spilled all over it. All right, page 12 in part two. It's actually, it's actually going to be called chapter 12 in the published book. So, so that is worth taking a look at. Look at compromise. Read what that says again and, and, and connect with that because that's what's messing you up. Okay, so one mistake or one compromise you make when you're young, okay, uh, can kind of snowball into right. a whole series of bad decisions right. based upon that one root cause, that one right. root mistake. So, what, so when, okay, so what you have to do, the, let me see, where's my, there we go. Root cause of your suffering, to find the root cause. Because if you're in your 40s or 50s or 60s, and, and you've let these mistakes pile up in your life, and you thought you could fix them. It, it, let, me, let me just, for a minute, it not only have, have, have you, has it compiled and co compounded, but the people in your life that you have in your life expect you to keep compromising. It's working for them. Right. It doesn't and work for you. And that locks you in. That, that's like, well, how do I get out of this? I feel like I'm trapped. Go ahead, Ray. Okay. So if you're ever going to find out, you're, you're always imagining, well, how did I get into this situation? Right. Which is another way of saying, how do you find the root cause of the problem now, the suffering now. So I was, I read this over quite a few times this week. And as usual, did my homework. So I, and we want to hear from you guys on this too, but when Ray's finished and be ready to fire off your questions. And I'm just going to throw some something, answers. Yeah, I'm okay. going to throw something out there and I like to hear everybody's comment on. So what you're trying to do, once you realize that you're in trouble, your fifties, your sixties, it's not working for you, but you can't figure out how you got into this situation because right, right. you're trying to establish at that point a reverse timeline that you're trying to go backwards and put the pieces in place to find out where's that root cause? Right. When did it happen? How do I identify it? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is your question around that, Ray? Well, you have to ask yourself questions. Okay, let me say, ask you guys the question. This is a good time to, to segue into you guys. What, how would you answer that question that Ray just posed? How would, how would you do it? Don't all speak at once. <laughs> you guys, come on. Well, you have to ask yourself questions. And, and I came, I thought the question was why. Okay, Here, here's how I feel that you have to start with this, all right? You have to start, you have to feel, start from feeling the, the pain it's causing in your life. Right. What is, what is that that we keep doing? I'm going to say we because we all do this at some point, right? What is that pain that, that it triggers in us? And we're going, you know, I'm sick of this. I keep doing it. I don't, I don't know why I can't stop doing it. I'm not an idiot, but I keep doing the same thing. I keep making the same decision. I keep going back to the same kind of person. I keep doing this, okay? How do I figure this out? First, you have to write it down. It, you're, you're, it's so much bigger than you are at this point. It's gotten so much power over you, all right, at this point. So the first thing you have to do is to, is to write it down. We're going to talk about this next week, too. We're going to... Talk about making it still, okay, and that's next week, but you have to write it down because you can't see it, you can't examine it, you can't stop it in, in, in time, in space, until you write it down and it's identified and, it, and it's there, okay? Close your journal. Don't even try to figure it out. It's been with you for so long. You, it's got power over you. Then go back and look at it in a day from now or a couple days from now. And go, okay, I can look at this now a little bit more objectively. Because that's what you need to do. You need to look at it, not from being a victim of it. Not from taking it personally. But from seeing it. 
just like it is. All right, just like it happened to somebody else. All right. So the, the pain. All right, that's where you are now. And you have to identify that first. That's the first step you take. Now what? The, now the pain is a symptom. I know of your bad decision way back when. So right. You can't say, well, how did I get into this situation? Because you don't know. You have to question yourself. Why am I feeling this pain? Right. That's part of writing it down. You got to write it down. Right. And then you've got to identify. You got to break it down. Is what Ray's saying. I liked the the car analogy when you know your wheels were out of alignment and you're driving down the road all wobbly and you know it's wobbling, but you keep driving. You're compromising. You know, pretty soon your tires are worn out. So, but when you're at a situation in your life where you're, you've had it, you've had your I've had it day. You're, you're gonna, not going to do this anymore. You have to ask yourself why. So, using the car analogy, let's. This is something everybody can relate to. The other, the painful parts of your life are, are a little more difficult to look at, but everybody can relate to having a car. Your battery dies. Okay. So, what have you been putting on? I'm going to get to uh -huh. that. I'm going to get to the short of this. The, the analogy: What purpose does it serve? What have I been putting off? And how did I put off that one thing that I said? You know, I lowered the standard in my life. Is what I did. I compromised. And so once I got used to that, I kind of fell into a comfort zone with that uncomfortable feeling. But I kind of, you know, got used to it. And uh, then I started compromising in other places. Like I could have done better. I could have. You know, I know I could have done better, right? That type of thing. It's always it always comes down to that. And how come I let that slide? And how come I didn't make that call sooner? I could have saved myself five thousand dollars. You know, I why That's didn't I right. why didn't I get out of that relationship earlier when when it was it was fatal? It was not going to happen. It wasn't going anywhere. And uh, what and get on with my life sooner. Okay, so what happens the more we compromise and put up with this stuff, you guys, and, and lower the standard in our life, the more damage we do to ourselves. We do damage to ourselves. And that's where we say to ourselves as we get older, am I running out of time? And do I really have the energy and the time uh, to make a course correction? Or is it too late for me? You know, I hear a lot of people say that. And it's never too late. And I'll say, and here's my argument about that. I could just say, it's never too late. Just love yourself. You know? <laughs> I, you'll never hear me talk like that, by the way. That's, <laughs> I, That's I, all I, other people. I just don't go there. Um, I just want to go whack on that one. Um, <laughs> okay. So, so here's the deal. You, you're, you know you're compromising. You catch the compromises. You may not act on them right away. It took you a long time to get this get far down the road, right? That's why you have to write them down. Let me use an analogy with you. I'll give you a life analogy that I went through, something that happened that comes into my mind. The first time I was married, I've been married three times. God, Linda, three times? Okay. <laughs> Thank God I got out of those other two, you know? <laughs> anyway, um, you got to know when you just need to keep walking, you know? And I and that's what I did, and then re, and then every, everything's good, you know. But anyway, third time's a charm. The the first time I was married, I was you know I was naive. I I thought we'd be married forever. I was I didn't know. And um, uh, I found out that he was, and I'll use these words in the in the childish way that I thought at the time, that he cheated on me. <laughs> And it doesn't really, that's really not really what happens when they do that at all. And the guides get into that. And I love how they describe it. But he cheated on me. You know, I was in my 20s. I didn't know any better. And, um, and I realized that I wasn't, that I had actually compromised quite a long time. I put up with a lot of stuff along the way. And he was doing stuff. And I'm, I'm going, what's wrong with him? And you know, he's not connecting with his family. This is not a family. And then I kept putting up with it. You know, I kept thinking, well, maybe he's tired and maybe, you know, and it's okay to do that. You guys, I think that it's okay to do that. If it's really true, if that person's in pain, they're not going to act at their best. They're not going to be your best, you know, friend to be around. They're going to be in pain, right? Okay. So there's a difference, difference between just being with somebody and, and seeing them through a hard time, a rough time, and somebody where they just abuse you and abuse you and abuse you and compromise, okay? 
and it's a compromise and you let yourself fall into it that would be there that's where you have to when you write it down only when you write it down can you see the difference between them you can say i feel terrible today my husband's sick and and he's treating me badly and I, I mean, I, I hate this. I, I don't want to live like this. And it hurts me. And that might be true. From that, you might find that you need some help. You need to bring somebody in so you can get out of the house for three hours to go get the shopping done, you, the banking done, you know, get the things you need to have done and get away from it for a while so you guys aren't at each other's throat. And, and he can, he's got someone else that breaks the pattern for him and or her. And, and it's not a compromise. It, it's, it's how you guys work it out, you know, because they're not always going to be, or maybe they are going to be that way and they're on their way out. Okay. And you would never leave them at that point. That's a whole different thing. But, but I'm talking about a lifetime where you compromise and the kids and, 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 you know, and everyone in the family and your friends and the coworkers and everybody, you know, they just kind of wipe their feet on you because you allow it. Well, that is not okay. You know, and the minute that you recognize it, you read it in your journal and you acknowledge what's going on, only then will you start to see solutions. And this is what you need to find. You need to find the solutions. The solutions eventually dig you out of your hole. It mm -hmm. gets you out of that, out of the compromise, and then out of making these redundant decisions that are, that were uh, built in compromise, that were that were undermined by compromise, all right? You see how it all starts? Is that crazy? But that's what happens. I like what you said. You said a couple of things there. I, I wrote it down. You got comfortable with the uncomfortableness. Right. And you said, how did I get in the situation when you're talking about your first marriage? You were looking to blame. The blame. The blame prevents people from ever getting to the root cause. Right, exactly right. Right. See, he cheated on me. Right. I blamed him. Right. He cheated on me. Well, what the guides really told me, like, I don't know, it was a couple of weeks after I found out. They uh, they said to me, they said, he didn't cheat on you, Linda. He cheated on himself. And I was like, I instantly got that. I was like, totally clear. It never hurt me again. It was done. That 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 thinking was over, you know. So it, when you compromise, the people in your life benefit from that. If, if they're the wrong people, if they're the people who push you into it, that, that like it, that you put them first and you put yourself last or maybe not at all, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, this is, it, it's a slow process. All of a sudden, one day you get to the point where you go, wait a minute, wait, you know, I don't want, I don't want to live like this. And, uh, and it just all comes to the surface, you know? But when that did happen at that time, and I found out he, what he was doing, I took two weeks to think it through. I used my journal. I wrote everything down about what happened, what I was thinking and feeling, and what was going on with me. And until I could see on paper what happened logically, what, what just happened in this world, you know, and how it went down, and my place in it, then I could see clearly, okay, systematically, this is what I have to do. This is what I'm going to do. It's not haphazard. I had a kid. I couldn't just, you know, react and affect everybody's life and mess everything up. I had to be careful how I stepped. Even if he cheated on me. I mean, which is ridiculous. They only cheat on themselves. So it, 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 until you write it down, can you look at it with a sound perspective? Otherwise, you can't. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Are you guys using your journal? Are you writing in it? Yes. Oh, talk to me about it. Tell me how you're doing. Well, I, I use my talking board and then I I write down what they tell me. Good, good. If I have dreams, you use it by yourself. I do use it by myself. How does that work? I haven't been able to get it to work. For right here. Use this. Try a pencil. Yes. You use I, this. I uh, get done. Yeah, it's and optimized. I, I've learned a couple of little tricks. Um, actually, Veronica and I were do, doing it together. We were zooming and doing it together, and we're starting to learn some little tricks, some little nuances that's making it easier for us to talk to the board. But one thing is, um, 
if it starts going counterclockwise, then the letters it's going to point to are Z through N. If it's going clockwise, the letters it's going to point to are A through M. Okay. So it kind of divides the board and you have to watch to see which way it goes. And the mm -hmm. same thing with the numbers. Like half moves. Yes, yeah, like half moves. exactly, exactly. And another thing I've, I've learned is they abbreviate. They do. Yep. And like texting or like um, yeah. twittering. Yes. <laughs> now, now, now um, uh, Kathy, tell uh, Anne how they do that it's in your case. Um, sometimes they'll just give me one letter mm -hmm. and they want me to figure out the word. Okay, mm -hmm. like example, what letter? For example, um, D for do and O oh. for Y-O-U. Right, right. You, they do that all the time. You, and then sometimes they'll go to letters like when they're trying to say and you too. You too, they'll use the two. Uh -huh. Or they'll use are you, are you. Yes. If they're asking you a question, okay. they'll say are you a lot. <laughs> you guys are doing great. Okay, keep going. Um, they have a wonderful sense of humor. They do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love it. The other day, I was, uh, I was getting ready to talk to them, and my pendulum had a longer chain. And I said, is my pendulum chain too long? And they said, yes. Back and forth is yes for me, and side to side is no. And they said yes, and I said, okay, give me just a minute. Let me fix it. So I shortened the chain, and they started talking to me, and they said, are you about ready? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Kathy. That is so good. Oh, God. And they are like that, too. They really are. I mean, we've had things where they've said where it's just cracks you. They are funny. And they are. But they're effectively funny. They're effective. Unlike me sometimes. That's true, Ray. Don't, they don't tell the same joke. No, more they than once. do not. Oh, thank God. Okay, go ahead, Kathy. Um, sometimes they'll spell a word out, but they don't spell it exactly. Mm -hmm. Like um, the other day when they were talking about my brother in law, Mike, they spelled his name M I K, not M I K E, just enough to. Um, Phonetically. They want you to think, what are they saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. They want you to, here's what they're training right. you to do. Use your intuition. Yes, exactly. And th no, they're tra training you to use telepathy. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, telepathy is the language of choice because it's, what, it's how they speak to each other, uh -huh. where, where they are. So they really want to speed it up so that, you know, they're kind of, running you through the paces so that you learn to yes. become more telepathic and, and easier to reach. Go ahead, Kathy, right on. They gave me a message. Um, I was talking to my friend Victoria about joining the group, and I think she's probably coming on Thursday. Great. We're going to be there this Thursday. Yes. But um, they gave me uh, abbreviations, and I had to figure out what they said. So I figured out the letters that they had given me is that they wanted to talk to me about Victoria and they want me and Victoria both to come to the Sedona two day thing. Um, and then Scottsdale, the Scottsdale. Yes. yes. Um, and then there was um, letters that I couldn't figure out what it meant. And I said, will you give me some more help on the, uh, will you give me a little more insight on this? And they said, no. <laughs> they wanted me to figure it out. <laughs> right. right. And, and what happened? Well, I figured out, and this is when they told me to buy a lottery ticket. Um, the part that I couldn't figure out was you may need, you may require cash. Okay. Of course I will. Um, play on the new lottery ticket is what it came out to be, or what I uh, inter interpreted it to be. They wanted me to play a number on the pick three for the lottery ticket so I could get cash to come to Sedona. Hmm. Well, you never know. You never I don't know. They gave you the numbers? They gave me the numbers. I'm <laughs> not going to share them. <laughs> <laughs> Did you win? Um, they told me to play for Friday, which is the 10th. Okay. 
And you know, it, it can happen. It may or may not happen. Uh, we one time we went to the uh, we took the talking board. We were at a <laughs> remote viewing event in Las Vegas that we got invited to. And when we were there, we, you know, we brought the talking board, and they were like so amazed at this. And what? And tell them what happened, Ray. Well, I think it's interesting that we got involved with remote viewers. Yeah, to they, start with they, them. They, they came. Yeah. They approached Bye. us. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they approached us. Because because they knew what we did with the board, and we did an experiment with them for what a year, maybe yeah, a year where we would um, there was a database of photographs that were tens of thousands of random photographs in this database, and they would pick two or three numbers that associated with a photograph in the database without looking at the the photograph, and the remote viewers would with only the number would. Try to see that photograph. It's called a coordinate. A coordinate, okay? And then we would use the board to describe the photograph. And it was just incredible what, what, what the guides saw. And that's why they invited us to, to, uh, to Las Vegas. They had a lot of these photographs. Like one of them was uh, a picture of, of radio telescopes, you know, that space telescopes, radio telescopes, a whole field of them trained up in the sky. Now, the message that came through the board was you could talk to God from here. Oh, wow. And it was like that all the time. It was a, a, a Tell them about the sports bet. A tea shop, you know, a tea shop in London. Describe the tea shop. It was a green tea shop that had said this, you know. And so they had the pictures out on the table along with what came through on the board. So after the... After the meeting, we took the board and a couple of other people, and we went to the sports book at, uh, where was it, Caesars? Yeah, we went to the sports book at Caesars and used the board to pick the races. And uh, Now, it's a small board, so the people who, who, who look over that area of the casino, <laughs> you know, we were careful not to let them see what we were doing. Yeah. Not that there was anything wrong with it, but... Who knows, right? Okay. In one hour, we had 165 percent return on our money, and what? And we and we picked a trifecta, and uh, won money on every race. Wow! And so from then on, these guys kept wanting us to come back to Vegas, <laughs> not not to be in their event, but to, to bet, go to the sports go book. The sports book. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we were winning, these guys that that you know look over the area. They were starting to do this, you yeah. know. Uh -huh. and it was uh -huh. time to go. It's time to take all of our things home and go. Yeah. You know. We, anyway, that, they won't let you come back. Yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't. We didn't push it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So anyway, that was pretty interesting. That was interesting. Yeah, the whole remote viewing thing was interesting with using the board. Exactly. It really was. They were mm -hmm. fascinating. It, it took it, it took a lot for us to get rid of the remote viewers because they were they were so you know, fascinated with this, that we just couldn't keep the project going. We had business to do. We had stuff going on. And yeah, we were doing it like three days a week. It was crazy, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. My concern with that, to me, remote viewing, I always associate with the CIA. And That's I'm, where it started. That's where it started, CIA. Yeah. And I'm a little anxious yeah. that they're playing me and that they have technology that would allow them to influence what I'm getting, what I think is is telepathy, they're manipulating me. That's an anxiety that I have. Well, most of the people in, in the remote viewing programs that were run uh, through Stanford and through the military, all were picked a long time before when they were children for their mm -hmm. psych for their right. psychic abilities. Mm -hmm. and they were trained just like anybody else to do something like that. And mm -hmm. it's still, even though they say they got rid of it years and years ago, it's still going on. They wouldn't. Yeah, they wouldn't get rid of something that works. Right. Well, that's they, another they, reason. And that's yeah. another reason to work on to write things down and mm -hmm. to work on staying tuned into what's going on with you. Because it's not only the fastest connection to your guides and to your uh, clarity of mind. But it also catches things like that, things that pop up that don't look like a fit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you look at it and go, and you just go, you know, that one there, uh, I, I'm going to just kind of put that over there and leave it out there 
But that looks a little suspect to me. I'm just going to let that sit there and look at it sometime in the future, and maybe I could figure it out, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mysteries of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a part of me that um, sometimes I put my journal aside, and I don't, don't let anything come through. Um, or sometimes the journal becomes more of a diary and I write what happened that day, but I don't go off into a meditation type of session. I stay conscious. So, and yeah. I like finish the page and put it aside and then I change ink colors so that I can see if I've gone two or three times back to the book in one day. I'll use a different ink color when I come back. Oh, that's a good that's a, that's idea. A good idea. Very interesting. Stop and, and start. Yeah, then I can see this was a block, this was a block. Like, I guess when Beethoven wrote his, his symphonies, he didn't sit down and write them all at once. You know, he'd do one movement, and then he'd do another one. Good one. And then, yeah, and he changed the names of it. And I just feel like I have to protect myself because I have political opinions that um, are hard for a lot of people to... People are afraid of the truth about if you're what our what's actually going on in our country or and in the I, world. Or yeah, the world. and I feel like I have a pretty good view of it because I do research and I find out, you know, the stuff that isn't covered by mainstream media. Uh -huh. And I don't allow myself to be terrorized by the constant streaming of bad news. That's, um, good. That's good. And so I've learned that News I'm meant to hear, somehow they get it through to me. There you go, Anne. Good. And if I'm not meant to hear it, it just goes right past me. But sometimes I'll just turn on the TV and it's not even necessarily coming from news. A movie or a show, I'll get a phrase and the phrase will be repeated in something I read. And then for the third time, it comes up, it pops up. And then I realized, oh, that's them. Right, right. They're, they're, they're trying to get through to you. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, again, it's a process. It's like the, it's like using uh, Ask the Universal Channel. The mm -hmm. guides call this the training wheels to get your intuition working. All right. Okay. And it's just a it's a it's a way to get you moving in the right because after a while, when like when Ray and I do this, it comes through as blocks of information coming from them mm -hmm. into this world using this talking board mm -hmm. and we use this you guys so that you you begin to realize you got you got to start with something automatic writing using your talking board your pendulum uh, writing in your journal when you write you're connected the mm -hmm. guides realize what you're doing and they're right with you mm -hmm. all right so it's always working for you. It's just that we need to learn how to how to adjust and, and, and make that connection to them, to, to bring the noise down in our life mm -hmm. so we can begin to be, uh, I guess the word would be uh, at, at peace with ourselves enough. Mm -hmm. So we're open. It's like when I get in the shower, I mean, literally, every time I get in that shower, even now, even before I get in it, they start sending me all kinds of stuff. She comes running out of the bathroom all wet with a towel around and says, I write this down, I write this down. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, there that's where they just, I have actually, I've got a recorder hanging on a hook. <laughs> I do. Mm. That's a battery recorder, so I don't, I don't electrocute oh, myself. Yeah. <laughs> and and I have it there so I can just you know say what's going on right into the recorder now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They told me that mm -hmm. we're all in a swirl, like a cyclone just swirling around us, blocking them, you know, and that 
what you want to do is think in terms of that cyclone is just if you took a bunch of cups and stacked them and then you took each cup out one by one find the cup that's them that swirl is is going to be there surrounding you and that's what keeps you in your dimension I guess that's what keeps you in time and space in this body consciously but where they are is outside of time and space and so if you can start separating the stacked cyclone then they can get through to you and once they can get through to you then you start to differentiate between what's just swirling out there and what's actually your conversation with them. You have it absolutely right. Now, the, the way that they're communicating that to you and the way they would communicate that to, say, Kathy, all right, or somebody else, they use a metaphor that was perfect for, mm -hmm. say, Kathy. They use that one for you, uh, Anne, because that was perfect. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, to, to, to convey how this works to you, mm -hmm. right? And you can actually visualize it. The way you explained it, you, you visualized it. You saw it, how mm -hmm. it worked. And that's, that's why they used that to get through to you about how this is going to connect with you and them. That's mm -hmm. very cool. And I can see that. You know, what they told, in fact, it's in Guided. When they uh, talked to Ray and I when we were first together, they said, you were guys were like two orbits that finally mm -hmm. connected. Okay. You didn't just long off in a different way. We mm -hmm. may have missed a few times, you know, cause it timing wasn't right, but then mm -hmm. the timing was right, you know, and that's how they described it to us in that situation. So they do those little metaphors to that makes sense to you, you know, I love it all. Kathy. Yes. So how so what else, Kathy? Um You guys are doing great, man. Well, today I got this was it today or was it last night? I think it was last night. I got this whole block of letters that I'm not they were going so fast and I was tired. I, it was last night. I was tired. Hello. That was part of it, but um I got this whole block of letters that I still have to transcribe. I still don't know what the message was. Okay. Now, what they're, what they're doing with you is they're trying to get through to you telepathically. They're mm -hmm. using the letters because they know you're using the letters, right? The letters. Yes. yes. But they're still, they'll always be pushing you a little bit more than you think you're ready for. To listen mm -hmm. and hear and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And trust. And trust. <laughs> when you get this. It, that's why writing it down is important. The, the more that you write all this down, the sooner you'll see that, that it's right here in this world. It's, it's physically here. And now you start to trust what it is because you can examine it. You can run it by your, a, a few times a week from now, a month from now, a year from now. And you can start, you're doing your due diligence is what's going on. They want you to do that. One thing, remember last week, <clears throat> they told me to experiment with the different kinds of energies. Yes. Especially the blue energy. Yes, the blue light. The very next day, I got a message just, uh, it was almost audible. Um, tuning forks. I'd never mm -hmm. thought about doing tuning forks, but it was just almost like instantly I heard tuning forks. And so I started researching and tuning forks are used a lot <clears throat> with Reiki to help people heal different parts of their body. True. True. But in, go ahead. And so I've ordered a couple of tuning Good. forks to use with my. Okay. Now, now, here's, what, <laughs> yeah, here's what I'm getting with you. Yes, Kathy. Oh. What, I, what I'm getting with you on these tuning forks, what came through. All right. Is it's, for you to be able to better tune in to your guides. They, okay. want, okay. they want you to use these tuning forks so that you start to vibrate more in sync with them. 
until you're right there. You're right there. Okay. That's why they want you to do that. Now let's let your guides talk to you about that. And that's fascinating. Sound healing will become a large part of your education. It's, Sound healing. it's the healing of the future along with light energy. You will find a lot of comfort in the tonal modalities like, like tuning forks and crystal bowls. Mm. Uh -huh. Have you experienced crystal bowls before? I, I have one. I want the whole set, but you know, those are expensive too. Okay. So. So, so that's just getting you your body starts to resonate to that set to that tone right and right. it starts to it starts really connecting with it it is it will shift you and shift you and shift you and that they will be able to reach you better and you'll be able to function better every on every front all right that's really good you like a rubik's cube <laughs> The Rubik's Cube? Yeah, they're just moving panel by panel for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how they work for all of us, Dan. They work for that. They work like that with you, too. <laughs> Who do we have coming here? Is know. that Nina? That's Nina. Nina. We see Nina out there somewhere. Nina. But we don't see your camera. Turn on your camera, kid. <laughs> We're having fun with this, aren't we, you guys? How cool is this? 